first idea of just making one exhibition very uh, fast we realized well this is actually then too dense so she has so many works by now that it just really makes sense to split this up in a three part exhibition series so this is the first exhibition in this part we had the first one like a bit of a cloud aspect because a lot of the artworks um, that Cassandra is collecting has this quality that they are dealing with just a moment in time and very minimal gesture. Interesting aspect of the seriality, again coming back to temporality as well because he was doing it redundantly. It's like this one year period that is working with this. That actually was then really beautiful in the evening and this whole room is just being lightened up by the neon work, obviously. So curtain shade and the light is on the floor. Classic bank, open, closing in, uh, in a very meditative uh, fashion. Uh, I have this breath. Um, Kasana was pointing out that he's usually picking his sujets or material just straight from the street. And there we have a connection to this piece by Nina Chanel. She also, for the internet and electricity, all that is running through the infrastructure of cables and it's usually something that connects and that is uh, about flow, data flow, like flow of electricity. But here she's cutting all that and uh, then from there we have this connection to photography essentially because the uh, photography always is always trying to cut time into like this one slice and uh, we have this wonderful um, photography by Lisa Holzer. She's a Viennese and Berlin artist. In this piece, what you probably wouldn't recognize is a ear pig. So from the pig, it's just the ear. Here, obviously, whenever you just slightly move your head, the surface of the painting is from uh, uh, not the painting, but the surface is changing, and when you're moving, it has this if, a visual optical effect that it's producing. Plus, like almost like a mirror, it is um, also bringing in all the outsides. So wherever you take this piece, always you have a different changing surface, and let let's say just as an image, it's a bronze cast, and it's extremely heavy for a small size. Um, the work is called Lost Wax and what is interesting about that, this is almost like an introvert sculpture because if what you usually you're doing, you use wax to make a model of something different and then you have the ceramic around it and then you cast it so the wax is gone and you don't want to have wax in it stuff. But here, you see like with the honeycombs, exactly that matter, the wax is the stuff that is then slowly being transformed and being kept as the actual um, subject matter, so to speak. And here, um, I think what, whereas this piece in itself always is very uh, present, not changing, lasting, um, there is one aspect because he uh, glued or, or casted this um, uh, wing of a bird into the sculpture, again, flying movement. He often combines our organic with inorganic materials, and yeah. I think on this side, you can really see the feathers very well. Um, designed the cord on her own, then soaked it, put this on the paper, and you really just see this subtle surface. Um, There's just the remains of this. And then we have the last piece by Rico Ricala. Approximately 15 minutes in between each photograph. And I think it's a really perfect uh, end note to the whole exhibition. Well, I always was interested in art, yeah. Um, as a, yeah, from my childhood or a young adult. And um, so I was very much. Um, visiting exhibitions, museum exhibitions, galleries, fairs and so and then the point came so I said okay so I buy my first work here. Yeah. I like very much Michael A. Smith, yeah. he's one of the um, in my mind best conceptual artists at the 
at his, his generation. So I, I have some works at home and some oh. works at my office and some works at the house in the countryside and now I have this oh. space, so I'm really happy. Yeah.